Okay, as promised, we'll talk about electrical tools next. Uh, some cutters and strippers and crimpers, the various tools that you're going to need in putting an electrical system in your aircraft. We'll talk about the wire and the connectors as well as we get into the installation of the G3X system on the RV4. So the first simple tool that you'll need is a good pair of cutters and I like these ones because they get into tight spots. You want a nice quality pair and that's going to be the key on this whole video is all these tools have to be the best quality that you can find. So these ones nice and sharp get into tight areas so you don't damage the wire as you're cutting it. Now wire strippers these are the best ones that I've found you want to get a pair of these that actually cut the shielding of the wire instead of ripping it off. So there's lots of different kinds out there. Don't get the cheap ones. These are not that expensive. You can get them from any kind of aircraft electrical supply store. And these ones here will actually cut around the shielding of the wire before it pulls it off. So it doesn't cause stress to the wire. Now next is crimpers, and these are going to be for the standard uh, crimped terminals that you'll be dealing with. See the red indication there, the blue, and the yellow for different size. The red is going to be 18 to 22 gauge, and the blue is going to be 14 to 16 gauge wire, a little bit thicker. And then the yellow you're going to use for 10 and 12 gauge, which is fairly rare in the at least the RV series of aircraft. So you just simply clamp it in there, get your wire. This is a quarter inch push on fastener that we'll talk about later. Insert the wire and then squeeze the tool all the way until it bottoms out and then it will spring back open. And that's it. You're done. One squeeze. Resist the urge to squeeze it twice. So I worked on an aircraft once that was having lots of electrical problems and the root cause was the builder was crimping as normal as you saw at the beginning there, but then was crimping it again at the base and that was causing a stress in the wire and causing the wire to break in several spots. Okay, the next tool is for uh, radio and transponder wire. I use the RG400 wire. And when you're putting on the BNC or the TNC connectors, you're going to have a metal sleeve that's going to go on the base of the connector like you see there. And you're going to need to crimp that in a hexagonal shape and that's the tool that you use for that. So this is also the same tool that you will use to crimp the tiny pin on the end of the wire. So there's another video if you want to look up radio problems where I show replacing the BNC connector on the radio. And when you crimp this one, you'll see it crimps it into a hexagonal shape. And that, of course, will be at the base of the BNC connector. I'm just showing you what the tool does here. And the little pin gets crimped as well. And there's a fitting on the end of this tool to crimp the pin. Another type of crimper that you might see is this one here and this is going to be used in the uh, connectors that have the little metal tabs hanging off. One side is going to crimp onto the wire, the other side is going to crimp onto the sleeve of the wire. The one that crimps onto the wire will actually crush into the wire and hold it nice and secure. But the one that actually holds onto the shielding of the wire is just going to crimp itself into a circular shape, not put any stress on the wire, just basically hold the connector on there for nice and secure. So there are several variations of these connectors, but you can see the metal tabs at the end of it. The larger one will crimp, crimp onto the wire and the back one will crimp onto the shielding. So you insert the wire, 
squeeze it down all the way and it has a nice secure crimp on it and then the back one gets crimped into that circular shape and it's important that that back one actually grabs the plastic Tefzel coating on the wire not the actual raw wire itself so it's nice and strong connection and that's what it should look like when it's all done All right, this is my favorite type of connector. So they're D-sub pin connectors, typically used for avionics. These little pins, male and female, go into the D-sub pin connectors. And I prefer using these over the soldered type uh, connectors for avionics. It's a really nice, simple connection fast, efficient, and it just slides into the back of that housing there. So that is a female example there, and this happens to be a 15 pin example. And there's a nine pin example, and these are actually male pins. And they just slide into the back obviously after the wire is already connected to it and it snaps in place and you hear a little click. The one downside really is that these are only good for 22 or 20 gauge wire which is most avionics wire anyways. Now you just slide the wire in there, squeeze the tool fully and it crimps around the base of the D-sub pin connector and you get a nice small strong connection and it slides into the back in this case the back of the female housing and you'll hear a little click as it slides in. So while we're at it I'll show you what to do if you need to remove one of these because it can be a little bit of a pain Here's the tool that I use you can get from any kind of electrical supply place. I label it so I can remember which side is which, but we use the white side for removing pins. Simply slide the wire into the little trough and then push the tool into the back of the housing and it will grab the pin and kind of release the connection. Grab the wire and the tool at the same time and pull and it will bring the wire out of the housing if you do it by air. So the bigger connections, the 4 gauge, 6 gauge, and 8 gauge connectors that you'll see here, which you can't crimp, I, I use this simple tool. Uh, you'll see this later in the build process, but the wire goes in there and you simply hit the top of it with a hammer and flatten that connector. So we try and avoid soldering any of these connectors in aircraft. A voltmeter is always useful as well. You're really only going to use it for a couple things. The first one is to test continuity, so make sure that your antenna connection or your radio connection has worked properly. You can put it on continuity and when you touch the two sides of it, it will buzz or give you a little tone showing that the wire is good. And the other thing you might need it for is you can set it to DC voltage. And if you're having any issues with your aircraft, you can make sure that you're actually getting battery voltage where you're supposed to. So every once in a while, you might have to solder something. I try and avoid this. So here's a solder housing. If I had the choice, I would use uh, the D-sub pin connector instead of that one. But the wire just sits in the back of this solder connector. You have a little tool to help you hold it in place. And then you solder. Add a little bit of solder to the soldering iron to get it hot. And then you hold the solder iron underneath the pin, try and heat up the tip of the wire itself and the actual connector, and then melt the solder onto the connector. So it's a fairly simple thing, but I prefer the D-sub one. So if I have a choice, I use D-sub pins everywhere. Of course, you want to put some heat shrink on this if you're doing more than one wire, so you don't want them to actually accidentally touch each other. Here's the D-sub pin that I prefer over soldering. 
So here's a label maker that I use. It's a K-Sun. And it prints on heat shrink material, which is really nice. Makes a nice professional looking installation. And it's quick and it's easy. So we just slide our heat shrink over there. This is eighth inch thick heat shrink and shrink it down. Of course, you don't need to write that long of a sentence on it. If you're labeling an elevator trim switch, it could be as simple as ET1, ET2, ET3. Label it on, label it on each end. And you'll have various sizes of heat shrink that you'll need throughout your build for different size of wires or connectors. Now we'll talk about the connectors themselves. We already talked about the red, blue, and yellow connectors. Here's for number six screw and eight screw and A and three bolt, A and four bolt, five sixteenths, which you might see on some of the relays. If your butt connector is actually connecting two wires together or the, or the quarter inch fasteners, push on fasteners. And then you got the bigger connectors for the big battery wires that you're gonna see. So again, the red 16 to 22 gauge, the blue is 14 to 16 gauge, and the yellow is 10 to 12 gauge. So there's the push on fasteners, which you'll see quite commonly in the build. In this case here, that would be a fuse block, and there is a grounding block where you'd run a bunch of ground wires to it, and they're just push on. Same with the switches, a lot of the switches that we use. And this just happens to be the voltage regulator, which uses size six screws. So we'd use the size six connector if we had a 18 to 22 gauge wire and that just simply screws onto the board there. And here's an example of something that uses a number eight screw. And again, this is a fuse panel. Same thing, the number eight screw just goes through the connector. And again, that would be a blue one for 14 to 16 gauge wire and it just screws in place. So the different wires, 22 gauge is the, probably the most common one that you're going to see. 20 gauge, of course, as the numbers go smaller, the wire gets thicker. 18, 16, 14, 12 gauge, fairly uncommon. 8 gauge, 6 gauge, 4 gauge, and then we have some shielded wire that you might see on some lights. I like to use this flexible line. This is actually welding cable that I got from BNC Specialty Company. And the shielded wires in this case here is a six wire shielded covered with that metal shield to prevent any kind of EMI interference. Here's another quick little tool that's useful. Grabs a screw, a long screwdriver to put screws in the back of avionics trays. A pretty useful tool to have around the shop. And of course, books and references. The air electric connection is probably my favorite. It has these diagrams in the back showing you battery and relays, fuse blocks, ground blocks, voltage regulators. Uh, we'll go through this more as we go through the build, but having a diagram to follow for your aircraft is definitely a smart way to go. And there are other books out there as well. And the valuable internet. Now just quickly over switches, we'll talk about more about these as we go through our build. But a simple on-off switch, again, aviation quality, that would be the off position there. And then the on position would then connect those two tabs, which is the quarter inch fast on, the push on terminals that you saw earlier. Uh, this next switch is kind of a three-way switch. This would be used when you want to turn a couple things on. And I use it for battery and alternator. So one switch for the battery and alternator, the middle switch, the middle position would be battery on. So that would be your master. And the up position would be battery and alternator. So you could also use it for nav and strobes, the middle position being your nav lights, the up position being your nav lights and your strobe lights together. And circuit breakers you might need in your build. I don't use them very often. I use them for electronic ignition and the alt field only. The rest is fuses. So I use fuse blocks, which have the push on fuses. It's just a more modern way for an electrical system. And that's what the fuse looks like itself.
really use circuit breakers in a position where you need to reset something, such as the alt field or the electronic ignition. And then this is the actual trim switch. So this would be a mo momentary up-down switch, which would be nose-down trim, nose-up trim. And we'll go through more of that later. So as we get into installing the G3X system in the RV4, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Build something, take it for a rip, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.